Good evening and a warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us on our program. From time to time, we interview various ambassadors and dignified personalities on our program uh, just to ensure where our country is progressing, where the world is progressing, whether it's economical, whether it's political, it's an all-in-one program. And today, we're very honored to have with us uh, the ambassador of extraordinary and plenipotentiary of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, His Excellency Mohammed Ashraf uh, Hadari, who's joining us on an exclusive interview uh, with Channel I Rukwani here. Good evening, Ambassador. It's absolute pleasure to have you with us on the show. Um, we're also talking, apart from our little fantastic moves of cricket, uh, the relationships, the ties that we have, whether it's the food and the cultures, it's all very similar that we are all one nation. But let me get to the ground of it. You've, you've uh, had a fantastic opportunity of exploring your expertise uh, within the years, especially being the deputy ambassador in India as well and the United States. How was your uh, spectre or time there? How was your uh, spare of work during that time? Uh, first of all, good evening and Ayuba one to the friendly and beautiful uh, nation of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, uh, but my time in uh, uh, India from uh, 2012 to 2015 as uh, Deputy Ambassador was uh, quite productive as India and Afghanistan are two key strategic uh, partners and also uh, we have uh, long-standing uh, ancient civilizational ties as much as we do with uh, uh, Sri Lanka. So we uh, worked on a range of uh, uh, issues, bilateral issues, uh, to uh, further bring our two uh, nations together and to deepen uh, those ties from government to government to as well as people to people. Mm -hmm. We have over a thousand Afghan students uh, going to uh, India uh, to study um, in various fields, uh, on scholarships uh, 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 provided by the government of India, which uh, we uh, appreciate. And also, my time in the United States was very productive. I served there more than two terms in various capacities. Mm -hmm. I began as first secretary and then went all the way to uh, deputy chief of mission in charge of affairs when the ambassador left. And uh, there is, again, the um, United States is one of our foundational mm -hmm. strategic partners uh, with which we have signed uh, uh, several strategic uh, agreements, including the, the strategic partnership agreement and the mm -hmm. bilateral security agreement, and as well as the status of forces agreement. The United States remains very committed, involved in Afghanistan as we work together with them and with the rest of our NATO allies and um, allies in the region like um, India, now of course uh, uh, Sri Lanka, to further deepen and in institutionalize democracy in the gains of the past uh, now 19 uh, years. Mm -hmm. So um, congratulations and we're very honored to have you Thank here you. with us in Sri Lanka. And as much as I would love to talk about the kebabs in Afghanistan, but I would like to go towards a little bit of history, sure. where we have positioned ourselves mm -hmm. af as, as Afghanistan as a country. Well, uh, Afghanistan uh, is a part of the uh, uh, regions uh, in a rich ancient uh, civilization, uh, mm -hmm. of course, with the pre Islamic Buddhist uh, heritage, and that's why we have the largest the statues of uh, Buddha in mm -hmm. uh, Bamiyan, where I often encourage uh, Sri Lankans uh, to, to by and large mm -hmm. tourists, but also uh, others to uh, visit Afghanistan, not just for business and investment. and. Um, uh, those uh, reasons, but also to uh, see the national beauties of Afghanistan, as well as to experience the, uh, you know, our shared heritage, especially to pay a visit and pilgrimage to the uh, statues of Buddha in uh, central Afghanistan, Bamiyan. Now, one of the things that on international media has been highlighted daily on mm -hmm. Afghanistan regarding the war situation, where are we standing there? It's very unfortunate, uh, like you said, that Afghanistan often shows up in international news uh, negatively, and that's uh, the coverage is often about war and violence, uh, which is uh, true, and uh, that's why our uh, courageous uh, armed forces have been fighting the Taliban, which provides an enabling environment for uh, other uh, regional and transnational terrorist networks mm -hmm. uh, across Afghanistan. So the challenge of insecurity, which is the matter of all problems, facing the Afghan people are not just a problem for Afghanistan, but also for the region and the rest of the world. Mm. 
and uh, therefore uh, on the one hand we are fighting the Taliban and uh, collaboration partnership with our strategic allies and NATO on the other hand we have also offered peace mm -hmm. to those members of the Taliban who uh, step forward and uh, uh, engage with us and direct face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, peace talks so that we find a political um, settlement, one that would uh, 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 consolidate the gains of the past uh, 19 years and one that would uh, end this imposed war. Uh, I say imposed war because the Taliban is an insurgency mm. as enjoyed since their creation back in 1994, uh, uh, safe sanctuaries, operational support and ideological support and indoctrination on the other side of the door and line in our uh, neighborhood. Um, that's, that's that, but what we really want the world and the people of uh, uh, Sri Lanka to know is that Afghanistan uh, is uh, uh, the heart of Asia. We are right uh, between South Asia and Central Asia. We are the key uh, to uh, uh, connecting the two parts of uh, Asia uh, and the Asian uh, continent, which is key to the unimpeded rise of uh, uh, Asian uh, uh, rise mm -hmm. uh, as pursued by uh, you know, larger neighbors like China and India and, and uh, others, and as well as ourselves, uh, because it's through connectivity and full spectrum connectivity that our economies as a whole and the continental uh, economy of Asia would uh, uh, rise. So we'd like uh, the, you know, the people of Sri Lanka and others in the world to know the uh, centrality of Afghanistan to the uh, rise of Asia and therefore the uh, you know, continued global regional prosperity. But also the fact that we have a, a very resilient and young population, 70% mm -hmm. of uh, the Afghan people are below the age of uh, 20, which mm -hmm. means that in terms of human resources, Afghanistan as a very, uh, you know, enterprising, resilient, and also a uh, young population, which if, you know, mm. uh, the war ended with the peace, we should be able to uh, use uh, our human resources to fuel um, you know, economic development that is key for the rest of the region as well. But uh, also, often we are portrayed as a negative, uh, as a uh, poor nation. Uh, while Afghanistan is one of the richest countries in the world. Uh, we're the most uh, nationally endowed country given our size in um, you know, Central Asia, South Asia uh, region. As we uh, hold the largest deposits of uh, uh, lithium, mm -hmm. uh, copper, iron, uh, and now gas and oil, and as well as precious and semi-precious stones, which if, you know, with our human resources, we were able to um, exploit and then, of course, uh, export and then reinvest uh, the uh, revenues from these resources, we should be able to, uh, you know, continue the process of uh, helping uh, Afghanistan develop uh, sustainab uh, sustainably. And then, of course, we'd like the world to know that we are a, a growing democratic government uh, of course, we uh, people have uh, embraced uh, democracy. We have had several cycles of uh, parliamentary and um, presidential elections in Afghanistan, the last of which happened in uh, September. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, we stand against uh, terrorism and extremism. I think these are the two key priorities of your government. Uh, Correct. Uh, yes, the national security mm -hmm. agenda to fight um, domestically, but also regionally alongside other partners, um, uh, which I had a, uh, an opportunity to discuss with His Excellency President uh, Gotabaya in our first uh, uh, meeting following his uh, election last uh, November. And that, of course, uh, uh, democracy and that also pursues a win-win uh, foreign policy agenda mm -hmm. with a focus on uh, regional uh, economic cooperation regional economic integration down the road, both bilaterally with all of our six neighbors, but also our uh, you know, uh, uh, broader neighborhood, including Sri Lanka, uh, multilaterally, bilaterally, multilaterally, multilaterally through such organizations as uh, you know, South Asian Regional 
uh, Association for Regional Cooperation, mm -hmm. um, SCO, this is Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization, mm -hmm. and, and others. Mm -hmm. So interesting, you brought about the industries, mm -hmm. the interesting industries that will definitely will be tying mm -hmm. up. Uh, but coming, uh, Sri Lanka coming from our dark days, mm -hmm. uh, we see that Afghanistan is also going through those. Yes. And the economical side plus the education, the different industries mm -hmm. that we're highlighting is going through that minimum struggle. Yes. We're still struggling and yes. we're trying to come overcome mm -hmm. with it. Where is Afghanistan when it comes to its economical situation? Well, uh, for uh, quite some time, our economy was uh, growing fast and rapidly and mm -hmm. was a double digit economic growth. But unfortunately, since the end of the transition process, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. the in, uh, international forces withdrew uh, from Afghanistan, at the end of uh, uh, 2014, our um, uh, economic growth started slowing down because much of the uh, growth was happening as a result of you know, the um, spending of the international community in mm -hmm. Afghanistan, meaning that uh, Afghanistan remains a rentier economy uh, as we are working hard uh, to uh, implement the reforms necessary and as well as uh, building the connectivities and the neighborhood and broader neighborhood for exporting our products and importing uh, in ways that benefit uh, our economic growth to, uh, and like I also said, extracting our natural resources to uh, to export and to generate the revenues that we need for reinvestment and creating and sustaining a productive economy. Mm -hmm. So making the transition from an interior economy that is um, foreign aid reliant to one that is you know, self-reliant based uh, on sustainability. Mm -hmm. So that's where um, you know, we uh, stand and um, our uh, current president over the past uh, five years since he took over office in 2014 has been uh, working hard mm -hmm. uh, internally but also in the neighborhood and internationally uh, to help um, uh, Afghanistan stand on our own to help Afghanistan achieve self-reliance foremost economically because it's economic yeah. growth and of course sustainable development that would you know bring you on a par with the rest of your neighborhood and the world as the world and you know different parts of the world different regions countries are in different stages of development so I would say that we are fast developing now again our economy has started taking off mm -hmm. our economic growth went from less than 2%, now close to 3%, and if, of course, we achieve Regret. peace, mm. and lasting peace, uh, genuine peace, dignified peace, then we should be able to you know, uh, continue growing faster and faster, and I, th I wouldn't be surprised that our growth could easily had you know again eight percent to 10% or, uh, or beyond, mm. because most of the uh, markets in Afghanistan are virgin and mm -hmm. hasn't seen much investment mm -hmm. from uh, inside and, and uh, outside. So with the peace and end of the war and of course the natural resources that I pointed out, our human resources that I pointed out and our you know um, uh, location mm -hmm. uh, that I pointed out uh, would invite um, investment. Uh, but also, of course, uh, you know, people for tourism, another area uh, which I left out in terms of the natural touch that. Yeah, beauty mm -hmm. of, uh, of Afghanistan, which in a way is a mountain uh, country, is much like Switzerland. If mm -hmm. uh, you look at Switzerland, which, where I lived and studied, mm -hmm. it's the heart of Europe. Afghanistan is uh, with the same features, mm -hmm. uh, is at the heart of uh, mm -hmm. Asia. Well, of course, Sri Lanka is the paradise on earth. Yeah. We're a everything. different version yeah. of uh, paradise on the mountains hmm. uh, and on top of the world. Uh, uh, so much potential in every direction you see in terms of you know, increased economic growth, increased people-to-people -people ties in the region, with outside the region and Afghanistan, which n right now in the war against terrorism and extremism is a center uh, of international cooperation to address those challenges. But when it comes to you know, the opportunities um, um, uh, and economy are also vast for uh, the region uh, as we together achieve mm. a stabilization in mm. Afghanistan. So interestingly, uh, Your Excellency, you said you met President Gotabe mm -hmm. Rajapaksa uh, to speak on mm -hmm. bilateral talks in mm -hmm. terms of development, mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of our little um, relationship mm -hmm. with Afghanistan. What's the progress like? What are we looking at? 
Well, uh, since the um, inception, um, or I should say, elevating of our relations to um, direct bilateral ties, mm -hmm. uh, which means opening uh, embassies in Kabul and Colombo, we've signed uh, seven MOUs and mm -hmm. agreements covering education, health, uh, economy, um, science, technology, uh, uh, supports higher education, uh, capacity building, okay. uh, employment of escape from Sri Lanka, and uh, so on. And there are seven additional MOUs and agreements in the pipeline, uh, which remain pending, which we worked very hard uh, uh, with the former government uh, last year. But unfortunately, last year was not as productive for the diplomatic community, including for our uh, bilateral relations, simply because of the political crisis that happened mm. and then followed by the very tragic terrorist attacks, unfortunately, that m mostly preoccupied the former government to address that. And then uh, also the mm, elections uh, and, and the whole electoral process mm -hmm. until it took. So we look forward to mm, implementing the pending, uh, to signing the uh, pending uh, MOUs and agreements, uh, which include one on defense cooperation, on trade and investment promotion and mm -hmm. protection, and as well as transfer of uh, prisoners in case, okay. uh, yes. Um, uh, also a waiver of uh, visas for our uh, two countries, diplomats mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so forth. While also working hard uh, with the uh, current government, which is very results oriented, very pragmatic, uh, to implement the existing MOUs and agreements which I uh, described. So I had a very wide ranging uh, discussion with uh, uh, His Excellency President mm -hmm. uh, Raja Paksa. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, it was very kind to even give me additional time. We mm -hmm. spent more, more than almost two, I think one hour uh, mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. um, uh, specific to discuss, you know, our status of our bilateral relations um, as well as the uh, situation in the region and the common challenges uh, facing our two countries as well as our uh, region. Challenges like climate change, uh, uh, environmental insecurity, and uh, challenges uh, of uh, terrorism and extremism, mm -hmm. drug trafficking, human trafficking, and how Sri Lanka, you know, and Afghanistan could work bilaterally but also multilaterally um, alongside other partners and common partners to um, address these uh, challenges uh, mm. affecting all of us. So interestingly, now when Sri Lanka has these MOUs or agreements that we have, SARC brings mm -hmm. together the nations yes. of all to all, and then Afghanistan yes. being included there as well brought in a yes. fantastic opportunity to the other nations. Yes. How do you see this as a awakening to everyone? Well, bilateral ties in many ways and multilateral really uh, should complement one another because the vision and mission of SARC was, when it was established in the 80s, was to bring the nations of South Asia together through win-win uh, socioeconomic uh, cooperation. Uh, so that the whole region in collaboration and partnership and shared investments in each other's you know, peace and prosperity would you know, rise together, mm -hmm. uh, grow together, and uh, with you know, a culmination to regional economic integration on a par with you know, uh, that of Europe. And uh, we know the history of Europe where before, of course, uh, World War I and II, we know that uh, the Europeans fought many wars, they pursued many zero-sum foreign policies against one another, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. just only brought them war, destruction, misery, poverty, uh, unfortunately, when th those wars happened. But it was only once they realized that it was no longer the interest to pursue that such zero-sum uh, policies that they, uh, you know, um, uh, moved towards uh, a common uh, uh, economic market and then a common currency and to where they are now. So that really underpins the vision of SARC or the vision of ASEAN and other regional groupings is to do away with war and zero-sum mentalities that in the past uh, uh, in Europe, for example, uh, underpin foreign policies towards, you know, win-win cooperation. So finding ways to you know, address the challenges facing them, but also finding ways to cooperate with one another to, to uh, you know, share prosperity mm. and peace. Mm. 
we have our viewers who are watching us right now. What would be your message to Sri Lanka? Well, my message uh, to uh, the people of Sri Lanka is, uh, again, to uh, learn more about Afghanistan mm -hmm. and to uh, consider visiting Afghanistan. And uh, um, uh, be it for business and investment, uh, Sri Lanka and Afghanistan um, haven't done much uh, business and investment. Tr tra trade volume between Afghanistan and Sri Lanka remains very low as much as we have reached out to the uh, Sri Lankan business community. And we're now working on uh, establishing a, an Afghanistan Sri Lanka Business Council, uh, which should uh, work with the Chambers of Commerce on both sides and to also bring as many big mm -hmm. and small size startups, companies on board uh, to explore investment opportunities in the two countries. Uh, but also, Sri Lankans to uh, go and uh, uh, visit, uh, uh, you know, the natural beauty of Afghanistan and mm -hmm. to also uh, go, like I said, on pilgrimage to cultural heritage sites where, of course, it matters uh, as much to them as, as to us, like, of course, the statues of Buddha and uh, Bamiyan. And to have, of course, uh, exchanges uh, from students to faculty. Mm -hmm. And here, again, uh, we have uh, signed an MOU between University of Colombo and Kabul University, which provides for exchange of students, exchange of faculty, joint research, which uh, you know we've been encouraging both sides, uh, uh, the embassy to take the initial steps to, mm -hmm. uh, to realize the you know, objectives of the MOU signed between the two mm -hmm. uh, university. Um, and also uh, exchanges on learning from each other, uh, especially Afghans, to learn uh, from the war to peace transition experience mm -hmm. of Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I was so uh, pleased to recently host a group of peace leaders, mostly women from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, who visited Sri Lanka and they engaged with a number of NGOs led by women mm -hmm. and as well as uh, members of the peace movement uh, of uh, Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. women peace movement of Sri Lanka to um, discuss their experiences in the past during the war, mm -hmm. but also in the you know, post-war years, and now how they are um, engaged in peace building uh, and addressing you know, the challenges from the war era, issues of reconciliation, reintegration, and so forth. And they even paid a visit to Jaffna, mm. and there as well they had very you know, fruitful discussions and, and meetings. So uh, for us, Sri Lanka is not only you know, a partner in democracy, mm -hmm. because you're a, a very mature democracy in South Asia. Mm -hmm. We're now in, you know, uh, also um, a, a democracy, but also a national partner in uh, development and as well as and, you know, peace building to the extent that we can learn uh, from your experiences to help build peace in Afghanistan and by extension in, in our region. So I encourage uh, all Sri Lankans to visit the Embassy of Afghanistan in uh, Sri Lanka to apply for your visas. Uh, the visa service are uh, easy. Uh, we can provide the visa within two to three days. Uh, we also provide information on the issues that I uh, discussed. Those who are going for business, we would be happy to guide them and uh, help uh, set up meetings for them with the Minister of Commerce and Industry, with the Chambers of Commerce and investors in Afghanistan and also for students to uh, visit universities of their choice, their, their websites, the Kabul universities, the American University of Afghanistan, with programs that they might be interested in, as well as faculty. But also, add us with the, you know, the, the monks of uh, Sri Lanka, uh, 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 for whom I have enormous respect. That's why I, uh, during my visit uh, to Kandy, mm -hmm. I um, uh, 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 called on the custodian of the Temple of the Tooth and as well as on the head monk mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Kandy. We had a very good discussion and even offered to build a temple, Buddhist temple, oh, and wow. yes, in Bamiyan, which I uh, welcomed. Uh, so uh, 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 any number of uh, ties that uh, Sri Lankans can think of uh, in bringing our two nations together, I would be happy to receive them at the embassy have a discussion with them and guide them through uh, so that uh, our nations um, and our governments uh, continue um, growing closer to each other and continue working with each other to achieve our shared uh, bilateral uh, goals and as well as multilateral goals within um, uh, regional groups and such as the South Asian uh, Association for Regional Cooperation, SOC. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. We're very honored to have you with us in our studios as well as on our program, and we wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, and I look forward to continuing this dialogue with you. Until we see you next time. Uh, to all our viewers, thank you for joining us. Yes, uh, while we enjoy that little kebab uh, from Afghanistan, uh, here's inviting you to join us in more discussions that will be listed in the future. Until then, have yourself a very enjoyable evening.